Bobby Marks, NBA, ESPN, front office insider. Bobby, do you have us? I do. Hey, guys. How are you? Let's go. Thank you so much for sticking with us here, Bobby. We appreciate you. Uh, we were joking around about this, but it's also a serious question. Mavs tonight, with all their injuries, might not have anybody from their starting five available to play. Have you ever run into a similar occurrence in your history with the NBA? I think one year, this is when I think we had started the season like 0 and 15. We had like eight guys available against Boston and oh. like they were all reserves. I mean, you're basically seeing basically what's going on with Memphis right now. Isn't this an every night thing yeah. for them Yeah, with the Grizzlies, except for Jaron? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like we're in this, you know, the dog days of late January, early February, where you're getting some injuries creeping up. It, well, everyone's looking forward to all-star break where they get some time off here. But um yeah this is a tough tough part of the schedule for uh for certainly where dallas is with some of these injuries mavs currently uh seventh right now in the western conference standings it's been a bummer without Kyrie lately they really haven't had Kyrie or luca healthy for the majority of the season together but well, what's your assessment as we approach the trade deadline on the all-star break of where the mavs stack up in the west yeah i mean i think you hit it right on the head i mean i think you know the the biggest thing um you know probably their best trade asset is getting healthy I mean, that's the biggest thing as far as, you know, not having, you know, Luca and Kyrie together, certainly for a small sample of games. Um, and then, you know, you had Josh out for a while and Derek was out for a while. Um, and you've, you've had some other, you know, certainly some other injuries uh, to, the, to that group here. It's, it's kind of amazing that you're, you're in seven right now. I mean, that's, that's the, you know, and, and, and I think they will get better as things go along as long as they're healthy here. I think the, the Western Conference is so wide open. I mean, now, you know, you can stake the claim that Denver is the team to beat, and rightfully so. But when you look at the teams up top, whether it be the Minnesota and Oklahoma City, who haven't won a first round series, and then you've got the Clippers, you know, sitting there who, you know, have played really good basketball since the Harden trade. Um, and, but, you know, listen, they haven't, you know, they're another team that hasn't advanced out of, out of the first round, at least, um, you know, at least last year here. Um, so it is wide open here. I mean, the, the, the trade deadline is, is interesting this year just because um, I think you probably have a lot more people willing to buy than a lot more people willing to, to sell right now. Hey, Bobby, was, you do such a great job of educating the fan base. You've lived this, you, you know, you understand it. But do you ever have fan bases get mad at you when you don't get enough for a trade? <laughs> like, like, you know, like you, you're you're trying to like you are honestly sitting there like, OK, I'm going to pick up the phone and this is what I can get because you've lived this, you know, and I, I've been in the same. I was in you know NFL doing stuff and I just you try to explain to fans and they just don't want to believe you. Uh, that's a good point. I, you know, it's funny. I did, I did the, uh, well, we have the two trade guides out on ESPN.com, the written part of it. And then I did a, um, I did it. I'm trying to do videos for all the teams, like sure. in eight or nine minutes. And I did a, a Dallas one, and then I, I really don't want to read the comments, but I was like, you know, let me see what these people are saying. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, it's <laughs> like, I'm sorry. This is who you have to trade. You know, this is what you have available. And, yeah. I, and I made the comment. I said, like, listen, Tim's been really good. He's six, probably six man of the year um, <laughs> candidate. I don't think I'd do anything. People are like, oh, my God, he's untouchable now. I'm like, no, he's not untouchable. Yeah. But unless something really made sense. And listen, the draft picks are the draft picks. You've got one first to trade. You're, you're limited to your seconds. You're not trading Luke. You're not trading Kyrie. You're not trading Derek. And it, then you get a process of elimination. And I wrote about um, the job Nico had done in the offseason where he basically, you know, with Kyrie coming in at 37 million, and then it gave you the flexibility to go out and, um, and, and, and get Seth and, um, and Dante and sign Dwight for four million a year and, and some of the, and Derek Jones for the minimum. And they did a nice job. And that's a big reason why those guys are kind of, why they're hanging around here right now. But what you have, I, I said this last night because Laker fans get all upset with me also. Sure. They said, like, listen, if you want to dance, you got to have someone to dance with, yeah, right? Like right. that's the you know that's the reality of the situation with with the trade deadline, and certainly with all. And then we've got all these new rules that are that are going to come in um, this off season that are going to be tighter as far as teams that spend a lot. Um, you know, sometimes it, you know who you are is what you'll be when when uh, we get past February eighth. So, Bobby, with that being said, what do you think are some realistic trade options for the Mavericks that they can target? We've heard the rumors of maybe a Kyle Kuzma with yeah. Washington, but are there some names that you think the Mavericks realistically could pursue? I think Kuzma might be a little bit too rich just because he's got a really good contract because it descends. Those are the ones you like, the ones mm. that like starts at 24 and then by the last year it's like at $18, 19000000 I think, 
you know, those guys in that $20 million range have more value than Zach Levine right now because it's like your third guy, right? Like how you're building a roster, it's your third guy. It's, you know, teams are trying to get away from that third max. Uh, I think Mark's probably been on the record saying about, you know, you, we don't, you can't have three max guys because the back end of your roster is really hard. So I think Kuzma's a little bit rich. I, I think, you know, Jeremy Grant's interesting, and, I mean, you'll, you've probably heard his name a bunch here. He, his increases as far as, you know, for, he signed a five for 150, 160, somewhere in that range. So that goes up, but then it comes down to, you know, what do you have to offer? You know, you, you basically have, you know, Grant, you know, Maxi, um, you know, just to kind of get the, the numbers, um, you know, the numbers up there to get to, you know, what, $27, $28 million in, um, in, in salary here. So it's it's a little bit of a challenge because I said there's not as many, you know, what the, what the plan has done, it's basically it's put a lot of teams in this position where a lot of people think you can, you know, there's 21, 22 teams that can make the playoffs. There's only four teams in the bottom um, you know, that are probably sellers, but they're looking to sell, um, you know, looking to sell high. Like, like, like Miles Bridges would be really good for a lot of teams, but you have to accept what comes with Miles Bridges, right? Like, is your fan base willing to embrace a guy that was suspended for 30 games for a domestic violence mm. situation that pled no contest? And is in the last year of his contract, and is basically a rental for three or four months. Like that's that's the type of thinking like front office are having when it comes to like a guy like Miles Bridges who can give you twenty night and play the floor for you, um, but there's also a lot of other things that come with it. <laughs> 